Privacy Invasion, Oliver Sippel. On September 22, 1975, Oliver Sippel, a former U.S. Marine, intercepted an assassination attempt on President Gerald Ford at Union Square in San Francisco. Although his brave act of heroism stopped Sarah Jane Moore from killing the president, Sippel suffered serious privacy invasions and was consequently rejected by society, his family, and even the president. Misappropriation, a person's name or likeness. Intrusion, unreasonable intrusion upon seclusion, news media, intrusion on the life of a celebrity or private citizen, government intrusion on the life of a private citizen. False light, unreasonably placing another person in a false light before the public. Publication of private facts, unreasonable revelation of private facts. Sipple suffered from publication of private facts. After the incident occurred, Sipple was hounded by the press who wanted the full story on his private life. Harvey Milk was an openly gay public figure in politics as well as a gay activist in San Francisco. He knew and was friends with Sipple and leaked personal information about Sipple's private life to the San Francisco Chronicle Rib Herb Khan, stating that Sipple was a gay hero in hopes that the story would break the stereotypes of homosexuals. However, Sipple was closeted in his hometown of Detroit and didn't even want his name or location known, let it alone his sexual orientation. Khan's story about Sipple was published and picked up by six other newspapers. Therefore, Oliver Sipple was outed by the press, which means they publicized his homosexuality without his consent. Right to know. Sarah Jane Moore attempted to assassinate President Ford on September 22, 1975, at 3.30 p.m. outside the San Francisco Hotel. Need to know. Sarah Jane Moore raised a chrome-plated revolver and fired at the president. The thirty-eight caliber bullet missed its mark and ricocheted into a parked taxi. As Moore aimed her second shot, Oliver Sipple, a former U.S. Marine, reached out instinctively, drawing her arm and aimed so that she could not get off a second round. No one was badly injured. The only person who was injured was a taxi cab driver by the name of John Ludwig. The president was not at all affected by the assassination attempt thanks to Sipple's bravery. Want to know. Gay groups in San Francisco insisted that Sipple be rewarded for his heroic act in saving the president's life. These gay groups went on to petition the Bay Area newspapers and broadcast stations to take notice of Sipple's bravery. They wanted the public to know that a gay, one of us, prevented an assassination. Sipple tried to prevent any publicity. He begged the news media to keep his life private, pleading that his employer and his mother and family in Michigan did not know of his sexual orientation. In response to the media, Sipple said, My sexual orientation has nothing at all to do with saving the president's life, just as the color of my eyes or my face has nothing to do with what happened in front of the St. Francis Hotel. The circle of intimacy is a good example of how Sipple's privacy was invaded. His sexual orientation was something only himself and his intimate and closest friends knew. Because of the media, this private fact was made known to his family, all his friends, acquaintances, and strangers against his own will. Some argued that Oliver Sipple was a public figure and therefore the media had every right for all investigative reports. After the incident at Union Square in San Francisco, Oliver Sippel sued for invasion of privacy, but the stories were ruled to be newsworthy. In the case of Sippel v. Chronicle Publishing, it was said there can be no privacy with respect to a matter which is already public or which has previously become part of the public domain. Once the information is released, unlike a physical object, it cannot be recaptured and sealed. It is true that information cannot be taken back once let out into the media. However, the private information about Sipple's sexual orientation should have never been made public. 
Because of this, Sipple's life was ruined, and he was never able to recover from the news media's damage. Sipple lost the trial and later filed for an appeal, which he also lost. During the case, his mother found out about his sexual orientation, and Sipple was disowned by his mother and family. He turned to alcohol for support and died a very lonely man.